Hey boys and girls, welcome back to the uh, Plaid Teardown. Uh, today I've got uh, Sam and Dave. Yep. <laughs> Sam and Dave, not, <laughs> not the rock and roll guys, but anyway, Sam and Dave, and of course, Dale. And uh, we're gonna be getting a little information on the, uh, on the electrics and electronics associated with the, uh, the Plaid. Um, everybody here was a little bit uh, from the Sparky side. Everybody here was a little excited that they saw hmm, Tesla doing new things. So I'm going to um, I'm going to be mostly standing around learning things. Uh, but uh, these three guys know what they're talking about. So with that, who's kicking it off? Are you starting? I it, can. Sure. Okay, great. We so, can we can start with the front on the as we came from the the Model Y. There was one central front controller. As Tesla's gone into the Plaid, they've split that controller into two boxes, a, basically a battery and distribution box and a separate front controller, um, both in aluminum housing. So it's kind of a disintegration. And we're not exactly sure all the reasons why they did it, other than there might be some redundancy that's going on as far as the way they're dividing the circuits and dividing the feeds. As we get into the boxes, we'll know more about that. The other part is, as I think has already been talked about, the lead acid battery's gone. And we've got a small, very small, lithium ion battery. Um, it connects up to the battery front controller. It's got a, instead of the conventional studs that you'd see it's a, a two-way connector or actually a five-way connector there's uh, a lin circuit in it that talks back to the to the uh, battery controller and some other i think it's a plus and minus they've got a ground in there and uh, probably another battery circuit to feed the electronics the um, but it saves i think according to ben that's like 10 kilograms less than the the lead acid that was in there it's before. very light um, and hopefully based on its size, Tesla's figured out how to keep it charged and not let it get just very discharged, which I know has been a problem in the, had problems in the past where people have had a dead battery. Um, so that's the front. The, well, let me, before we get off sure. that battery, do we know what's inside? Did they use the, uh, the 2170s like in the main battery pack or what is, uh, what's in here? Or have we gotten that far yet? We haven't gotten that yeah, far yeah. yet. Um, we do know that, you know, just based on what it says here, it's a 6.9 amp hour uh, or 99 watt hour. And we've already weighed it and it's 1.8 kilograms. So that's the extent of it at, the, at, at this moment. Um, uh, definitely shape wise, it could be either small prismatics or it could be uh, cylindrical cells, but we just don't know yet. Hmm. Well, that'll be one of the things we tear apart in the future. Yeah, right? yeah, there'd yeah. be room for a nice uh, battery management board up on top and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I'm sure that's going to be interesting all by itself. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Looks like the ABS ESP module looks very similar to the ones on the on the Y yeah, and I think prior. It's the same generation. Um, and. It's not shown here, but the, it still has the, the iBooster system from, uh, from Bosch. So some things that are the same, some things that are new. And as we go along, we'll, we'll get into the details on that, but probably for another video in the future. Well, the one one thing that I noticed is, um, you know, usually when you see the front of an electric vehicle, there's a tremendous number of harnesses. This doesn't seem to have as much somehow. Is there harnesses missing or, or have they just done a better job at this? Or what, what's your session, assessment on that? Well, we've got two halves from that state perspective. I'm sure the fascia, there's probably a fascia harness that carries the front sensors. The, this looks like it could be the rad fan connection for the thermal, but they've split the, the radiator fans left and right. That controls the left fan, this controls the right fan. So they've got two fan motors. Well, it comes down to if one of the boxes has a problem, they still got a fan. 
And you'd re basically the two fans are probably there for the high performance when you really need cooling and you're doing extreme things. So you back off, you could just have, you could limp in with one. Gives you a, a failure mode. You know, if you look at the FMEA, I got an opportunity that I could keep going and not leave the customer stranded. As far as your question about the harnesses, um, there's probably a cradle harness from that. And like I said, the front fascia, lighting comes off of one side or the other. I mean, as long as you've, they've done it with a separation between the two sides, so that does save, you don't have the big bundle going across the front that you see a lot of times on, a, on an internal combustion where you've got to get everything to the engine. There's a lot of circuits that go there, where here everything's back further. Um, and it's very clean, but, right? It's very well routed and very clean. Yeah, it's a it's nice, clean routing, and they do a you know they throw the troughs in where they need them. They use the protection as they they see fit with convolute, and then then there's sections that are just tape wrapped, which perfectly fine. There's, I can see a section through there that's open on one on the upside. Um, Those, um, I, I don't know that anything's missing. It's, I think there's a couple harnesses that are part of other pieces. Um, I it's, think it's just cleaner. It's, it, just, it's, it a, very it's clean. a very nice, it's and very they've clean. had some practice on this, so they're, yeah. they're getting a little, little smarter on how they run things. You want to talk about that, um, that ground eyelet on, or the ground connection on that? Right down below, Dale. Okay. Here. Down in here? Yeah, no, down on this side, you can see it. I remember I'll where get out of the way. previously stacking. Ah, yeah, good point. Tried to find it on the other side. I think it's already been removed. But I think on previous vehicles, we saw multiple eyelets coming in, and, and they were stacked for the ground. They've now, there's one, on, there's one on both sides. Yeah, we basically. used to call those like a joint connector. Yeah, but a joint connector for the grounds, which, uh, which is interesting. So they bring all those connections, all the ground connections in, and they are made in a single, single point there as opposed to stacking common eyelets and they're also using the there's a weld nut behind the right. sheet metal that that bolt goes into right so it gives them a, a pretty good ground in that regard but that's that's new for this that we did not see previously any questions from well we, we were we were having this discussion oh, yeah. about the ah, uh yeah thank you about ceiling here so uh dale and i see this uh in a different way so this is an external seal uh, something will, this is the male, and then the female would clip over the top of it. But Dale was saying that normally you'd have a shroud around this, um, right? That's right. The, yeah, you'd, you'd do something to protect it. Yeah. If you, if you look at these connectors, there's a, there's a ring seal buried down inside, and this shrouds the, that seal so it's protected. So, so Dale, doesn't, <laughs> Dale doesn't like this one because it doesn't have that. But... Uh, when I looked at it, this looks like VIP, like vulcanized in place, and it's got it's got multiple lips. So, to me, um, this doesn't look so bad from a ceiling. I used to be in charge of, uh, not in charge. I was the co-captain of sealing and fastening for engine division, and um, we 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 use seals similar to this in a lot of different applications. And it, it saves the extra cost associated with wherever that other one went. Yeah, with the shroud. With the shroud, like yeah. that. Well, yeah, this one here, this oh. one has it, I think. Yeah, it's buried down inside. There's another Here's example. Here's a good example here yeah. where you've got the, you could see the seal, and yet you see the, the shrouding around it as well, where it fits into the battery housing. So when you look at this connector here, it seals to the interior of this, and then the shroud goes around the exterior of it. Mm -hmm. So kind of like a, Double protection, I suppose. Well, I don't know. The outer not being waterproof, yeah, but the inner being waterproof. Well, damage during the summer. Yeah. yeah. But at the yeah. end of the day, it's a, it's a move away from conventional towards right. something that, um, we, like I say, at engine division, this would be perfectly acceptable. Okay. Um, just being an old connector guy, it's some of the, one of the things that we did just to as a belt and suspenders. Otherwise, really like the connector. Yeah, I like the connector. The, large blade it's a multi-contact mm. well designed otherwise that was a, yeah, really it's a, these. yeah 
they plug in, it locks in place. You got to, they put a connector position assurance on it. Oops. Yeah, they, they really are using wide spade connectors. They're carrying yeah, a lot I mean, of current through these connectors. This secondary is there that when you get it latched, you make that and it keeps the latch from opening. It's also a way to check that your manufacturing process has been done, that the guy seated it. You can't move that until it's latched. Yeah. So it, it provides a quick visual that it was put together right. And they're using some CPAs, I mean, which right. is which is interesting because that's more something that you know you, north american automakers have put in place have, have yeah. put there in tesla you wouldn't always expect them to do that but obviously they've seen the value in it or they've had some issues somewhere along the line well vibration the cpa gives you uh, that uh Double extra redundant, insurance. yeah, right. extra insurance. It's an insurance policy. So just by pushing a little pin, sometimes they used to be loose. Most of the time they're unconnected. Mm -hmm. These um, these secondary right. um, operations here, and like you say, you can't move this thing until you've got it fully connected. Right. So to me, it's a pretty good design. I like this. And it's an easy audit item, right? Yeah. You can see it real quick. You, it's a quick visual, and plus, as you said, it it gives you that backup on the latch because. Latches used to be one of the weaknesses of connectors. Well, Gotten a lot better over years, but they still are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So and, that's and they're using the mix too. This one is more of the the guillotine where it slides in, and then over here I see on one of the smaller ones we've got our our traditional lever lock. Over here we've got something you see uh, as well, more of a push lock. So there, and and then here is kind of like. Once it, the connector's out of the way, you can push it. So they've got a they've got a little bit of everything, which is pretty common on most OEMs. Yeah, sometimes driven by the mating. And and they're yeah, yeah they're being conscious of the mating forces. Yeah. Their their assembly workers are no different than any others. They don't want to push any harder than they have to. You right. Start doing that seventy yeah. times an hour, and you your arm tunnels. gets tired. Well, well you it, get carpal tunnel syndrome. There's all, all the, kinds of. And yeah. Sam brought up a good point. Dead you were finger. saying that it's driven by the suppliers a lot of times of the modules yeah. and things mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah. 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 So that's kind of what we see quick, quick and dirty under hood. Yeah. There's probably a lot more detail and we'll find that as we go along. As we always say, there's the devils in that detail. Side marker or side repeater. You want to move back into the inside unless somebody has something else for the under hood. Well, I think we pretty much uh, got everything we need to there. We've, I think you guys, oh, you talked about the ground. Yeah. Grounds we got. Because I saw the other one. Yeah. That's a single eyelet over there in the corner Same with way. a weld stud nut. Same one here. So that's a little different process than the weld on nut behind the the hole. Oh, yeah. This is a case where there's, you, weld a stud onto the to the body that has the nut integrated in it That's that one. from the assembly process you run the nut off you put the eyelet on run the nut back on yeah, so you got a very clean ground point this one here and you run a lot of current through those you, you know and what, sam's sorry i was gonna say you know what strikes me about those ground points is the use of unplated uh ground terminals um it's not something we see very often um when you look at the two, the two in the uh, right hand and two in the left hand, they, they both have, uh, they look like uh, raw copper. You're right. Yeah. It, and fundamentally, the two important things are the crimp mm -hmm. and the surface that the nut bonds to. And once it's down, yeah. it's sealed. And once if the crimp's done properly, it's sealed. So, and it's inside the car. So you mm -hmm. hope you don't have water. Um, the Sam's right there at the, the left body controller. We see that as being a, a new design from the Model Y, or yeah, the Model Y. It uh, looks like it's got about three or four more connectors than the Y had. And obviously there's some further integration going on there. Same thing with the, the right controller. It has additional connectors on it. The interesting thing though is 
the seat still comes to that module and plugs directly in, but each seat has its own module on the seat. Now, I've not seen the module before, so I'm guessing it's relatively new, but it's kind of going back a step instead of the okay. hyper integrated into the controller, they've added a controller. Right. And we're thinking that's the memory and heat. And it's, heat it's probably the memory and the other functions. You got heating and cooling for that seat, so they just ran out of I.O. In the, in the body controllers. I think you guys have talked a little bit about the new um, Autopilot MCU. Interesting in that the Autopilot board part of this is very, very, if not exactly the same, we'll know better when it gets out as the Y, but the MCU portion is brand new on this box. Mm -hmm because it's got the additional screens that it's got to deal with. There's a graphics module that's built into that. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into that as we, after we get it torn down, um, you know, because it's got to handle the additional displays that are in the car. Mm -hmm. The other thing I was, I think is worth noting is that the, uh, that used to be integrated into the center stack. Uh, right. And now it's standalone, similar to the uh, Y and three, uh, albeit a little different, but, but you know, uh, located closer to where they were and, and uh, moved out of that uh, center stack uh, display housing. So yep. that's, a, that's a change uh, in and of itself. I think we also noticed that the um, security module, which is kind of tucked underneath up in here, is a, uh, is a redesigned component. Again, trying to understand what exactly they did when, when we open up the box and right. get a little bit more detail on it. That See, was something we noted. One of the things that looks like they've added more antennas. Yeah, that was So a they're yeah. trying to make sure that all parts of the car is covered, that if you, when either you get in or you want to operate something, it knows you're the right person to do it. Um, the restraint controller on the floor looks like it's carryover from prior models looks still like the Bosch module that was there in the on the Y one interesting thing that I can never understand and Sandy will like this I think but we've got two connectors here on the floor two inlines going across the car and one of the inlines looks like it's got about six circuits in it and I'm gonna say 12 12 plugs so you could have basically, instead of putting a 20 way, you could have put a six way in and handled your, your cross car, because this vehicle's loaded. And if you have more features you want to add to it, okay, go to the bigger connector, but it's almost, looks a little older school that somebody's protecting their space cling. And they just put the bigger connector in. But, you know, there's a gram or two of weight that you could get rid of there. Uh, what else did we have? Oh, it's, again, the, the two antenna modules in the overhead for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, those appear can pretty much carry over from the Y. Um, that's kind of what's there. I think another large carryover is their high voltage, their high voltage onboard charging uh, set, set up. Instead of using cabling, they're, they're doing again what they did on the Model Y, and it's using an uh, inner uh, aluminum uh, bar and an outer aluminum tube with an insulator between them uh, instead of uh, wiring. And so that's your current conductor. And then through the floor, if you can see this over here, uh, this would mount, I'll wait till you come over. So you can see this will go, it goes right through the floor. You can see where there's a, there's a hole in the body in white. And so this would connect to the, uh, to the battery uh, module that's responsible for charging. And then once the two bolts are down, uh, you can see this little shorting bar here, connects those guys when you close it, and then you're good to go. It's all locked down and uh, a, lot, uh, a lot less expensive than the traditional cabling. Sam's got one that he likes. Yeah, so we were talking about just in terms of how they've, you know, routed the, the harnessing in, in the body. And this, this is great for us to see, to have this, this vision right now, because 
you know, as we go through a teardown, it's, it's nice for a couple of wiring guys to have the vehicle in this configuration where we can s visualize how everything's routed. And like Dale mentioned earlier, they do a pretty nice job of adding in troughs and, and clips. But I did notice one thing here. Looks like this, there's one tie strap clip here that is uh, not exactly in the right spot because I don't think I could actually pull this enough to get it over. Eh, maybe I can to get it over onto that stud where it actually belongs. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of that clip being mis misaligned. The guy, the guy on the line harness. didn't want to do that 70 times an hour yeah, like you just wanna, did. He didn't want to pull it taut. But, and, and we were looking at it earlier this morning, and Dave brought up the point that, you know, now you've got this exposed stud where this clip would have been over, and, you know, potentially you've got a rub point on the harness there. But that was the only thing I saw that, from a quality standpoint, that was a... Actually, with a number of, <clears throat> with a number of uh, connections and everything else that's going on with the harnesses, that seems like minor. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's very amazing. Clean. I mean, we usually find a handful of clips in the bottom of a... Oh, yeah. It's right. like amazing how many things we, don't get uh, snapped up. I'd always love to check the area where we deck the chassis to the body. Yeah. Big, big hydraulic lift that would bring it all up and run the bolts in. You'd always look in the bottom of that pit and there were always Man. either wheel speed sensor connectors or other things laying down there. That things you don't cut really off. need. You Absolutely. know, not real important, but you know, they're, they're there for, <coughs> yeah. for a couple purposes. Yeah. Um, we still have the several boxes that look like they're from a from the past we'll know more when we get into them the the amplifier i believe that's on this side and then the charge port control on that side um but otherwise it's a it's following suit of what was done on the y all of the park aid sensors all go to one body controller there's a dedicated can line that goes from that controller I believe it's the right controller goes into the the uh, autopilot board and we did get a chance before the car was disassembled it was still functioning we clipped onto the can lines and it looks like that autopilot is the one place that Tesla's making use of can FD because it's a we saw it as a five megahertz communication line Oh, that could have been bad. Yeah. As opposed to the um, 500 kilobaud that's pretty much been there forever. Hmm. So there, there's some reason that they've gone to the, the higher speed for the ultrasonics. And we did see can FD capable oh, yeah, transceivers much. all over the car on previous versions, but don't believe they were utilizing the speed. They weren't this turning was, it on, they were just buying quantity. Yeah, this one appears to be the first time they've actually turned it on. So, and utilizing the speed. Any speculation on why they would be doing it? You just, just a guess? Just needed, needed additional bandwidth. bandwidth for some reason that they wanted. And you think about it, you got 12 sensors yeah. reporting. It, they may have just run out of, run out of width on the, the 500K and they just kicked it up. So that's the high level observations at this point, as you know, we always say the devil's in the detail and we'll be digging into each of the modules and yeah. looking at them more closely as to how they run. Another thing we noticed is, again, the body controllers left and right are pass-throughs for a lot of circuits. Even some of the CAN circuits are, they just come in and they go distribute them around. Mm -hmm. They don't really, there's not, there's, we don't think there's a CAN transceiver for a couple of the buses that pass mm -hmm. through. Yeah, the number of circuits that are going through. Same there. with, you know, like audio circuits to the doors. The airbag circuits. And airbag circuits. Tesla's not been afraid to use another controller to route those circuits through it. And it's mm. historically. Well, well the historic thing, people, that's, yeah, just, you know, that's just uh, I, yep. demarcation yeah, yeah. between that's mine and that's yours. You know. Oh, yeah. Well, and but, again, what it, what it does for you is, you know, very few inline large inline connectors between yeah. harnesses and that's right. that's what it does for you All saves. and, right? and every saves. time you uh, i hate to say this but every time you eliminate a connector your quality goes up connectors are the number one uh driver of poor quality for electrical products period it's another so. one of those mechanical things 
That's what I well, <laughs> and I think something a lot of people aren't aware of is that each connection, each connector, and each terminal has a finite lifespan of connections right. yeah. it can make, right. and sometimes it's as little as two and three. So rework yeah. becomes even an issue even in some environments. So yeah. another one, I'm not sure why it's there, but there's two. I'm going to say tiebacks on the body harness for the seat connection. Yeah. They've got a, a tape back and a loop there. Not sure whether that's for, don't know whether. Thermal expansion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's a lot of thermal. Yeah, well, you know, you know normally, for a pipe, I mean, I yeah. used to do, uh, I did some tail lamp harnesses and we used to call that a drip loop when it's. Yeah. They yeah. hang down, right? So if yeah. any water it is in there, it drips through, but obviously that's not the case here. I don't, I don't know what, hopefully <laughs> don't nothing, know what well, you might have some dripping there, but again, everything's sealed on the floor. And it's facing the wrong direction. Do you think, Sam, that could be something for service so they could work on the seats powered when they're not in a well, sitting you, position? Well, you might rip that if you're no, working under the it. seat, yeah. I don't know, because it's, you know, it's got a, the, the clip that's integral. Yeah, to it's, oh, it's, yeah. Hold, it's clipped, it's holding yeah, the, the clip too. Clip. Okay. Yeah. okay, so, so that's, it's not something you can just rip off. It's not a quick, yeah, yeah tear. It's not mm -mm. a tear away. Mm -mm. Don't know, mm. but that's a, there's what? Probably four inches, or no, it looks like no, maybe six, maybe. six looks like or a six seven inches. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a big loop there. that bundle. So there's another one of your Graham savings yeah, right? yeah. opportunity or two <laughs> or two or quite a few because yeah. um, you get it on both sides. it's on both sides yeah. so it's it whoever did the design was con same guy did both sides must have done the left and right body harness mm. um, don't know you got another couple big inlines behind the the other cross member for yeah, the rear right. those look a little fuller so I feel a little better that they didn't didn't over design those. Yeah, so those are the main connection points between the left and right body harnesses here, here, and then there's That's one more. Are they the same yeah. as uh, this? Very, no. you know, it's a, they it's look a, like a little bit uh, type of design. And then one, one last yeah. one up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But really nice provisioning with the. Yeah, very good. With the cross members, the the structure, they left room for the wire. So yeah, they, the body guys obviously play nice with the the electrical guys. At these Tesla. are nice and tucked yeah. underneath here. I think it goes back to the everybody's working together on the team. Well, obviously, I, it's there's a lot to be said for that. And mm -hmm. when you get, you do play nice, you can do some cool stuff. But usually the wiring is left over at the very end. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, this is what yeah. you've got to put in there and you've right. got this much okay. space. Why? You, you got body structure and you got interior trim. Get your wiring through that. Have a nice day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this looks like it's been planned. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. There's some, yeah. you know, when sure. things can ride along the, the structure like this and there's room. Yeah, yeah it's, it's nicely done. It's like it's, it's, there was a plan and they, you know, I, I did something like this many, many years ago, not where we used one as a conductor, but I just put the battery harness going across the transmission in a tube because they kept jamming the transmission up tighter to the body. Yeah. And I couldn't guarantee I have space for the wire. So I put it in the steel tube for early development. We got just to the prototype build and I took the tube out, but it made sure I had space for my wire. Because they go, well, you got to move that. I said, it's steel tube, hard tooled. What can I do? Worked yeah. wonders. They didn't catch on to me until afterwards, and it was too late. Well, I think we've uh, pretty much spotted everything that we can uh, on this first preliminary. So uh, uh, the wrap-up thoughts for me is that I guess we just we just said it. Um, it's a well-engineered engineered type of product again for some reason or other uh, tesla just hasn't gotten into the uh, into the mode of hey that's mine and that's yours and never the twain shall meet this this is car engineering as opposed to component engineering or space claim or what have you all the little terms that we use and think of all the time when we're when we're in the uh, normal automotive world seem to depart when we get to look at a Tesla. So again, um, it's just amazing to me how they, they continuously show up and impress us. 
anyhow, stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back with so, so much more on the plaid uh, in the coming days. And um, I will have a little surprise for you guys later on. Uh, a lot of people said I was, um, <clears throat> didn't know what I was talking about with the electric motor. So I have a picture now. <laughs> Uh, and we'll we'll uh, we'll show you that uh, on the next uh, the next Monroe live. Thanks a lot. See ya. Have a great day.